So number six, passion for the work. Now I've talked about the importance of character over competence, you don't have to know everything. Um, I've talked about the importance of, of having a purpose and knowing at least roughly where you're going. Um, you're going to struggle to succeed in a particular field, so if we're talking about woodwork now, you're going to struggle to succeed unless you have some real passion and desire for it. And it's worth really looking inside yourself to, to how much you really want it, and not just want because um, your parents expect it of you, or something like that, although that seems unlikely for this line of work. Um, but it's good to look at your motives. Why are you going down this course of action? Does it actually deeply resonate with what you want to do? Is it the most, is it just effortless and unquestionable that you want, and I mean really want, to do this? Or are there other motives at play? Are you not actually quite sure what you want? Because if you can, if you can find a direction in life where you have a definite purpose combined with a passionate desire for the thing, then that is the absolute key to success. And that comes again from Napoleon Hill's book, um, Think and Grow Rich. So number seven, attention to detail. I put attention to detail slash engaging your brain. So if we have somebody come to work with us, I am always expecting that person to really think about what they're doing. Not to be slapdash, um, but to, to, to finish things well, to look at the finer details, to look at the, the edges of pieces of wood and get a, get a consistent chamfer or round over on it, to, to, to look closely at the edge of the MDF that's going to get painted and sand it to a, a finish that's smooth enough. You need to care about the detail, you need to be the sort of person who's motivated by getting things just right. And the, that's, that's closely connected to engaging your brain. So it's not just about getting a, a fine finish on things, it's about paying attention to the underlying reason. And this is very, this is very key. You've got to be asking yourself, what is the reason why things are done in this way? So for example, I've had people work for me before where I've trained them in a particular process. So it might be the mounting of a particular type of sprung concealed hinge. And because of the way I think, I've just made an assumption that in my explanations of that hinge, they've kind of, they've thought and looked a little bit deeper and looked at how that hinge works and why it works that way and all that sort of thing, in order that they can then apply that knowledge to a slightly different application, maybe a slightly different door overlay or door thickness or something like that. But I've had people who, to my surprise and horror, have the, the thinking has gone no further than hearing the set of instructions and repeating it with no thought about the hardware or the material or the reasons why um, and I, I just don't think that way and I, I'm, I'm looking for people who think at least a little bit like me about the reasons why because then you can develop and you can grow you want to be you want to be not just repeating knowledge. You don't want to just be like the school system can sometimes be where you learn the right answer in order that you can repeat that answer in a test. No, you, you need to understand the reasons behind the answer. You need to even question the answer and say, well, is that necessarily the best answer or the best method? So if you have a questioning mentality, then you're going to, you're going to develop because your brain's constantly going to progress. So, um, point number eight, faithfulness in the small things. What I mean is, if you come to work for me as an apprentice, there's a very good chance that the majority of your work early on will be sweeping the workshop, emptying the van and shaking out dust sheets, um, tidying and doing a lot of sanding of MDF edges and denibbing of par partly painted sur surfaces. And this, this, I hope this is not what you want to be doing long term. But if you don't do that with all of these qualities I've been talking about, then you will never be trusted with anything else. Because the person that is faithful in the small things 
will be trusted with the bigger things. But if you can't show me that you will do what's, what's needed of you because it's what the business needs, it's not that you're being tested or punished, it's just that the other people in the business have achieved a level of skill where their hours are best spent on the skilled work because that is more profitable for the business. And the only reason we, we took on an apprentice is because we've got lower skilled work that will free the other team members up if someone else is doing it. So you're actually a very vital cog in the machine. But your role early on is to do the menial tasks. And I've had people who have, have been wanting me to to get them to do wall scribes and stuff on site from you know just a few weeks in when if they mess that up on site that's going to cost me a lot and yet those same people aren't really they're not really doing a good job of even sweeping the workshop or, or repacking the van and I'm just sat there waiting you know watching and waiting for them to show me that they've got some basic ability and the most basic of tasks but they're so preoccupied with wanting to do the more skilled thing um, but they but they never get there and they don't realize they're only holding themselves up it's not it's not me um, and I often think to myself say if somebody thinks that maybe I'm I don't realize how great they are yet why don't they just stay after after hours at work or in the break and and show me some scribes why don't they practice why don't I see them practicing why don't I see passion and investment in themselves and responsibility and going the extra mile because then maybe maybe I have been slow to give them more responsibility but it's up to them to win me over because it shouldn't be me that's always taking the risk it shouldn't me, be me that's always footing the bill of mistakes I want to see people step up even if it, even if it costs them rather than saying oh well I'm only being paid to do this or that uh, you, you work overtime. I mean, what, what I've said to a lot of people that have come through the business is, look, I've got this, this workshop here. I don't mind if you want to do your own personal projects. I don't mind if you, if you want to start winning work elsewhere and using my workshop to, to do that work. I mean, obviously we'll talk about it. And yet I see so many young people just not taking, you know, they've got these opportunities staring themselves in the face. They've got access to tools and advice and workspace and I see these people that, that say they have a future in woodwork and they just don't bother to take advantage of the opportunities that stay in them in, in the face because too often they have an employee mentality and they think that it's my responsibility to to tell them exactly what to do to give them and to pay to pay them for every learning opportunity but it's not it's their responsibility so Number nine, understand authority. And this is, there's certain subjects which in our present culture, and our present day and age, can be tricky because you use a word like authority and for a lot of people that has a negative overtone. What I mean is that there is an appropriate structure in any organization where there are people with more experience and more responsibility who, who are and have to be the decision makers who are, who are in authority over you. And it's not appropriate for them to be authoritarian or abusive or anything like that that's not what authority is authority just means that they have the responsibility and, and the say so if I have someone working for me they have to have a healthy understanding of responsibility of sorry of, of authority um, because there's a dynamic here where you you cannot carry authority over someone else unless you have learned to live under authority unless you've understood the dynamics of authority and and respected that because you are not you're not frankly worthy of someone else respecting you unless you have an attitude of respect um, and if you can't respect someone in authority over you then you're well you're certainly not going to respect somebody who you have authority over and so you're just simply not going to do a good job of of having authority and if you come into my business, I, I would want you to, to grow in responsibility and to grow in authority. I, w I would happily hand over responsibility to people who show themselves capable and, and worthy and of good, good character. Um, but you've got to be under authority first. And I mean, I'll tell you how, how that works. So Brady is a great example. So Brady now pretty much runs the workshop because he has over the years shown himself competent and that doesn't mean he doesn't make mistakes, we all make mistakes, 
but he is constantly navigating that fine line between making a decision that he knows is within his responsibility and his authority level to do um, so that I can let him get on with it versus something comes up where he thinks, you know, I'm not quite sure here and I probably ought to run it past Al and he will do that and he's, he's got a very good judgement on that. So he knows that he's still under authority, he knows that I'm ultimately the decision maker and over the years it, there have been tensions around this because sometimes I've held on too tightly to something that he feels he should have, he should be able to, to make the choice on and I've, and I've often then sort of let go of that and said, yeah, I do trust you actually to do that. Um, Or I've, or I've sort of expected too much of him sometimes and he's not felt ready but there will always be these kind of tensions and the thing about having a healthy respect for, for people in the team is you just have to navigate these things you have to com continue to communicate and communication is part of being under healthy authority is, is you, when you get, sort of get that check that sort of mental check of oh I, you know, I might be overstepping a line if I just make this decision now you never be shy to just go and ask that person. Never think that you're letting the person in charge down by asking because you're not sure about something. I'm always, I love when apprentices ask questions, and that is that's the key. I've not put this as a point, but I, I really want to see people asking questions, and and I, I can't stand it when I see, when I'm explaining someone to someone, I just see in their eyes that they're not quite sure. I'm just thinking, what are you going to ask me? Because <laughs> I want them to to be clear. Um, so I've digressed a little bit, but I think you get the point about authority. You've got to you've got to have that healthy, that healthy respect and and trust, and asking the questions, but but also starting to step up to your responsibility um, at the same time. So the final point, point number ten, uh, I've put understand the learning process, and this is a whole subject in itself. The way in which an apprentice or anybody in a learning environment learns and progresses can be described through something called the, the square, the, the learning square. And that's just a way of depicting four steps. So the first step is the, is the step of unconscious incompetence. So you don't quite know how little you know. And in terms of the teacher-learner relationship, what's happening is I do and you watch. So you come on board as an apprentice, um, I'm doing the skilled work or Brady's doing the skilled work and you're watching. And this is really important to learn because if you're just tasked with sweeping a workshop and doing loads of boring menial tasks, you might miss the fact that what's actually expected of you is that while you're doing that, you're keeping a close eye on what the skilled people around you are doing because that's that is the first step in you learning and you're never going to progress unless you unless you watch and that actually puts you in this very safe secure starting point for learning because you start to familiarize yourself as long as you keep your eyes open and engage your brain you start to familiarize yourself with the tools with the processes the speed at which that person does stuff there is there is a surprising amount that you will take in just be just by being around a skilled person so that that's um, step one of the square I do you watch and you're as you enter that that um, process you are not conscious of how little you know you're not fully conscious of how incompetent you are because you might have some basic knowledge of woodwork but you don't yet realize how much there is to learn so step two is I do and you help. So you've been around just kind of doing all these tasks that need doing and, and I and I maybe think, right, he's seen me he's seen me do this enough, I'm gonna say, right, can you just help me do this? Um, and so you get a little bit closer to the action. I might I might hand you the saw. Um, just for some basic straight cuts and stuff like that. And you're starting to become conscious of your incompetence because you're starting to see how lacking your skills are compared to someone that has been doing this for many years and that's good that's part of the learning process so step three is yeah so step three is you do and I help 
So now you're, you're actually doing the task, having, having seen it done and having helped and, and understood it, because it all starts with the brain and your thinking. So it's all about once, once that task exists as something that you basically understand in your head, then you can get more hands on. Yeah, so, so you do and I help. So I'm closely on hand I'm, and, I, and I'm watching to see if you're about to, to make a mistake and to stop you or sometimes to let you make the mistake and then help you talk through what went wrong which is a very important part of the learning process. Mistakes are, mistakes are the best teachers. So you should have a healthy understanding of mistakes and, a, and an expectation that you will make mistakes. It's how you pick yourself up from those mistakes that really matters. That will, that will teach you the most. So at this stage, stage three, you are starting to get consciously uh, competent. So you're starting to starting to grow in your skills and you're, you're very aware of what you've learned and how far you've come. So you're now able to use a, a particular saw or whatever. So you're very conscious of your competence. Step four is you do and I watch. So I've now handed over a task to you. Um, but I'm, I'm stepping back, I might just be nearby. And I'm increasingly trusting that you know how to do it. And you're now entering the phase of being unconsciously competent. Which is, which is what true competence is. If you see a true master using a, a plane or whatever, they get to the point where the, the tool that they use is, is it's like it's one, it's one with their body. They're not thinking about how to hold it right anymore. They're not thinking about how, how much knowledge they have in their head about the correct methods of using it. It's totally unconscious because it's become so much part of them. Just like me holding the steering wheel and driving now, I mean, there's a hopefully a, a level of competence there that is it's just what I do. Um, so yeah, you, you want to, your ultimate goal is to be unconsciously competent, where, where the skills to do your job are, are totally part of you. It's like muscle memory. And that does take a long time to arrive, to arrive at. So um, once you've reached that fourth step, then you are, you are in a position to, to teach someone else. And this is where, where Brady's at. So if you were to come on board as an apprentice, Brady would be doing a lot of the teaching in the workshop. You'd be with me on the installs, I'll be teaching you then. But Brady would be leading you through this square in the workshop. And I'm not saying that we always, I'm not saying we follow this like a rigorous pattern. I'm just saying that having an understanding of this, of this, these underlying principles and the way that you will progress through learning any task, having that understanding will really help you. Um, even if it's just assessing where you're at and thinking, okay, well, I'm, I may be at, at step two now, um, but on this other task, maybe I'm at step three, almost step four, and that can encourage you. Okay, well, I hope that's been helpful. I've, I've made this video for people who in the future may inquire about working for us. Um, I mentioned that I'd, I'd talk about books. I've mentioned the book by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. The other book which relates to your sense of personal responsibility and having an investment mentality. The other book that I recommend you read is called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This book really switched on a lot of light bulbs in my head. And I, I would consider that required reading, even above and beyond the other book. I'd consider this required reading for anybody that wants to work in my business. And I would want to hear your thoughts on it after reading it. So go buy it on Amazon or get it on Audible as a download. That's how I that's how I consume books is I just listen to them usually in the van. Um, and see what you learn from it. I'm not going to give too much away now. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.